In a world racing to decarbonize, most green hydrogen projects are still on the drawing board, delayed by cost, complexity, or lack of demand. But deep in the Saudi desert, something extraordinary is taking shape. A futuristic mega-project is already 80% complete, and it's unlike anything the energy world has seen before. This is the Neom Green Hydrogen Project, the centerpiece of Saudi Arabia's bold bet on a post-oil future. It's not just ambitious, it's real. It's under construction, and it's moving faster than almost any other clean energy venture on Earth. In this video, we'll explore how this $8.4 billion project is being built, what's already done, the challenges it still faces, and why its success or failure could reshape the global hydrogen economy. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button and like this video as it's the best way to support this channel. Saudi Arabia's Eniyam Green Hydrogen Project, a central component of its Vision 2030 plan, has reached a major construction milestone. 80% of its infrastructure is now complete as of early 2025. The project is being developed in Oxagon, the industrial city within Neom, the kingdom's $500-plus billion smart city in the making. Jointly owned by ACWA Power, Air Products, and NEOM, the project is on track to become the world's largest green hydrogen-based ammonia production facility, powered entirely by renewable energy. What's already built? Construction has advanced rapidly across four major components, green hydrogen production facility, wind garden, solar farm, transmission, and storage infrastructure. Major equipment like wind turbines, electrolyzers, hydrogen storage tanks, cold boxes and pipe racks are currently being installed. The renewable power backbone, 4 gigawatts of solar and wind energy capacity, is on schedule for completion by mid-2026. Commissioning of electrolyzers will follow shortly, with the first exports of green ammonia expected in 2027. At full operation, the NEOM facility will produce 600 metric tons of green hydrogen per day, converted into green ammonia for export. That's enough hydrogen to offset 5 million tons of CO2 annually, the equivalent of removing over 200,000 petrol cars from the roads every year. More than just clean, it's massive. This will make NEOM a cornerstone of global industrial and transportation decarbonization, particularly for hard-to-abate sectors like steel, shipping, and aviation. Transporting hydrogen is notoriously difficult. NEOM sidesteps this challenge by converting its green hydrogen into ammonia, a safer and more energy-dense form for shipping long distances. Air Products, one of the project's key stakeholders, is both the system integrator and the exclusive off-taker of the ammonia-based hydrogen. This strategy is critical for connecting production in the Middle East to high-demand markets in Europe, Asia, and beyond. In May 2023, the Eniom Green Hydrogen Company, NGHC, closed $8.4 billion in project financing, including a $6.1 billion non-recourse loan from 23 banks and institutions, such as the Saudi Industrial Development Fund, SIDF, and the National Infrastructure Fund, NIF. That level of financial backing is rare in the green hydrogen space and signals strong global investor confidence. Challenges remain, demand uncertainty and market risk. While construction is ahead of schedule, commercial risks loom. So far, the project has secured only one major buyer, Germany's SEFE, for up to 200,000 tons of hydrogen annually by 2030. This limited offtake has prompted emergency high-level meetings in Riyadh. Saudi officials are exploring fiscal incentives to attract more buyers and considering pivoting toward local consumption, though domestic demand is still nascent. The Neom Green Hydrogen Project isn't just about clean fuel. It's a strategic lever for Saudi Arabia's broader economic transformation, diversifying away from oil, building high-tech infrastructure, and capturing a first-mover advantage in the clean energy race. It also aligns with the kingdom's Saudi Green Initiative, aiming to make Saudi Arabia a global sustainability hub while still leveraging its dominant oil position with parallel investments in blue hydrogen, carbon capture, and mining critical minerals. The Eniom Green Hydrogen Project is a rare outlier in a green hydrogen landscape filled with uncertainty and stalled projects. Its rapid progress, massive scale, and high-level backing make it a case study for what's possible and what's still at risk in the transition to a low-carbon future. 
Whether Neon becomes a global energy game changer or a cautionary tale will depend not just on construction, but on the world's willingness to adopt, invest in, and trust hydrogen as a scalable clean fuel. I'm Jaco Weinenz, Vice President of Operations here at NJHC. Hydrogen gas can be produced in many different ways, including a process called electrolysis. Water is made up of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. When we send electricity through the water using an electrolyzer, the electricity breaks apart the water molecules, releasing the hydrogen molecules, which can then be captured as pure hydrogen gas. Producing carbon-free green hydrogen involves powering this process using only renewable energy, which for NGHC will be supplied by over 5 million solar panels and over 250 wind turbines to so split water into its two components, hydrogen and oxygen. The hydrogen is collected and stored while oxygen is released into the air. This clean method avoids carbon emissions unlike traditional hydrogen production from fossil fuels. There are different ways to transport hydrogen, such as through pipelines as a compressed gas or cooled and liquefied into liquid hydrogen and shipped in containers. NGHC will convert its green hydrogen into green ammonia or transport around the world in specialized tankers. As a dense carrier, green ammonia makes storage and transportation more practical and efficient, especially when hydrogen needs to be transported over long distances. At its destination, the green ammonia is turned back into green hydrogen and used to power heavy transport and industrial processes. NGHC will produce 600 tons of green hydrogen every day. If that's used in hydrogen buses or trucks, it could save the world up to 5 million tons of CO2 every single year. Hydrogen is the most abundant element found in the universe. On Earth, it's most commonly found in water. Um, it is any more or any less dangerous than common fuel sources that we use today. For example, if you were refueling your car, you'd make sure you switched off your vehicle. You'd make sure there were no ignition sources present in the area. If you were to be cooking with methane gas, you'd make sure that your equipment was in proper working condition. Um, and you'd also make sure you were cooking in a well-ventilated area, for example. So hydrogen has a low ignition energy, which means that it can ignite a lot more easily than other fuels. It also has a high energy content by weight, which means that just a relatively small amount of hydrogen gas contains a significant amount of energy. Whilst this is advantageous for energy storage and a key part of what we're trying to achieve at NGHC, it also means that a larger amount of energy can be released in the events of ignition. So unlike conventional fuels, hydrogen is non-toxic and about 14 times lighter than air, which means that when it's released, it'll rise and dissipate very quickly, which greatly reduces the risk of ignition at ground level. Moving forward, industry and regulatory authorities must build on existing robust safety protocols and continue to make safety a key priority for investments and refinements to ensure that green hydrogen becomes part of a clean and thriving economy. At Neon Green Hydrogen Company, we've already begun the development of our process safety management system, which will be key to the proper functioning of our assets. This can only be possible with proper reliability and maintenance, ensuring that our plants function effectively and efficiently. The application of all available tools and techniques to identify, assess and manage risks at our facilities and throughout our supply chain will make it possible to create intrinsically safe facilities, minimize the risk of incidents, and establish appropriate response mechanisms. Mm-hmm.